In this example, we are asked to compute the surface integral, curl of f, dotted with ds, vector ds, where the vector field is given to us by this formula, and the surface s is the portion of a cube. So I'm going to sketch a cube very quickly and tersely here. It's the portion of the cube that neglects the bottom here, all right? And so this cube, I've, I've shaded in or, or colored in the curve at the bottom here because this curve down here, this is going to be the boundary of our surface. And the cube itself is going to be the faces of the cube. These form the surface itself, including the other two that we can't see here. But this is our surface with its boundary which is a square in the xy plane. Okay, so this is all an xyz coordinate system. And our vector field is given by this. We want to compute the flux of the curl, so the, the surface integral of curl of f dotted with ds. All right, on this, for this, uh, for this situation. And so remember that by Green, or by Stokes' theorem, excuse me, by Stokes' theorem, this is just equal to the path integral around the boundary ds curve, positively oriented boundary ds of f dotted with dr. Okay, and so what we need to do is we need to represent this boundary curve by some parameterization, and notice that the boundary curve is coming to us in four pieces, right? So we have a c1, c2, c3, c4, and we need to deal with each one of those individually. So C1, C2, C3, C4. And let's do it. So R1, this is the portion of the curve the way that I've drawn it. If I'm going to do f dot dr here, then um, obviously I need to parameterize this and we're going to end up with um, integrals that uh, just go in along each line segment then we have to add them up, right? So r1 of t, this is just going to be the vector function which is 0 uh, in the x, sorry, it starts at the origin, 0, 0, 0, right, and it moves just out one unit in the x direction, so the y and the z remain 0, and so we can just do this as t, 0, 0, and t will go from 0 to 1. I'm going to parameterize all of these so that t varies from 0 to 1, and then we'll have a systematic way of writing down each of these, okay? So r2 of t, this one is going to be, this one now starts at x equals 1, and it stays at x equals 1, and then the y value changes, right? The y value changes, the z value remains 0 that whole time, it stays in the plane, right? The z value is going to be 0 for all of these. They all remain in the plane, the xy plane, and so this is when uh, y varies from 0 to 1, and x remains 1. So this is 1, t, 0 r3 of t, this is going to be the one which starts at 1, 1, and it works back down. So, so t, uh, the x value is decreasing now. So this is going to be 1 minus t, 1, 0. The y value remains 1 on that entire portion of the curve. And then r4 of t, we can probably guess now the x value is 0 the whole time. The y value is going backwards. So if, as t increases, we have to do 1 minus t here. And so these are the four component functions of our, of our curve. And notice that in, on R1, when x is t, y and z are both 0. And so along, so now let's go down, let's look at our vector field along each one of these curves. So f along c1, okay, it's going to be t times 0 times 0. So that's 0. And then in the second component, t times 0. So that's 0. And then t squared times 0 times 0. So 0. So there we go. So that means we don't even have to worry about this integral. Once we've parameterized it, we don't have to worry about the actual path integral. And now we go on to c2. So c2, y is 1, and t, or is it, sorry, x is 1, and y is t. Um, but z is still 0. So notice there's a z in each of these components. And by the way, z is always 0. So now at this point, maybe we say, hey, let's not even worry about that at all, right? So it's always going to be 0, 0. And in the middle here, what's going to happen on this portion of the curve, we actually have a component, right? So 1 times t, this is just t. So f along c2 is t. Put a little dot there. We're going to have to use that one, right? So now we go back to f of c3. 
same deal. Um, we're only looking at this middle component again, so we're going to still have to do something with this, right? And at this point, um, the product is 1 minus t, and so this is 0, 1 minus t, 0. Put a dot there. We need that one too. And then finally, f of c4, this is the 0 vector again because uh, x is 0, right? So when x is 0, that's zeroed out. So um, we can reduce this quite a bit. So now our this surface integral that we want to compute can be reduced to the sum of two path integrals along pretty simple straight lines, right? And these are the two parameterizations that we need. And let's just write down, we're going to need the dr1 and dr2, right? So dr1 is r1 dot times dt, and r1 dot is going to just be the vector 0, 1, 0 dt. This is r2, I'm sorry. So it's the first of the two that we need, but it's r2, right? And then similar, D of R, dr3 is r3 dot times dt. This one's going to be a negative 1, 0, 0 dt. Just take the derivative with respect to t and then uh, work it out, right? And notice this. When we take our path integrals, this one dotted with this one is going to zero out. Okay, just take the dot product. You can do it in your head right here. This part's going to be zero. So those two are gone. So after all of this work, most of what we've done in this problem is just reduce the problem to the path integral along a single line segment. Okay, and what we end up with then is that by Stokes' theorem and then all this work that we've done, the surface integral of the curl of this vector field dotted with ds, so this is the flux of the curl, is equal to the path integral along this portion C2 of f of C2 dotted with dr2, all right, it's kind of funky notation, but what does that mean? That just means that this is what we have to compute, right? Remember our parameter domain was 0 to 1 in the t direction, and then what we have to actually integrate is 0 t 0 dotted with 0 1 0 dt, but when you work this out, this is the integral from 0 to 1, t dt, and this is just a half. And so the flux of this vector field across the surface of the cube that does not include the base of the cube, so the surface of this cube that does not include its base, the flux of this vector field is one half.